Ah, the graceful owl, fantastic winged beasts of the night sky, mighty hunters, and one of the wisest animals of the animal kingdom. Just kidding, owls are stupid. Well, hello there, citizens of the internet, and welcome to Animal Mysteries, the show where we take a long look at some of the common myths and misconceptions surrounding animals and ask that important question, just how positive are we really? I'm your host, Trevor Suick, and today we're talking about owls. Before we jump in today's myth of the wise old owl, I feel I should clarify something. I've worked with tons of different animals over the years, and I love owls. They're one of my favorite birds. Throughout my career, I worked with several different species of owl, and I loved every single one of them. But my all-time favorite thing about working with owls was teaching people what absolute bird brains these creatures actually are. Honestly, it's so bad that my team and I used to joke that an owl could learn a behavior and learn it well. But if you want them to learn a second behavior, you have to wait for them to forget the first behavior to make room for the second. Think of owl memory as less of a flash drive and more of an old school floppy disk. Now in defense of humanity, I guess, Owls have been woven into constant myths and misconceptions throughout human history. They're commonly associated with bad omens, good omens, misfortune, luck, death, victory, foolishness, and of course the one we're interested in, wisdom. So who was responsible for this particularly painful phenomenon, you may ask? If you said the Greeks, you'd be mostly right. While there absolutely are other cultures that associate owls with knowledge and intelligence, Arguably none spring to mind as quickly as the ancient Greeks and their ever so charming Athena. Athena was the Greek goddess of wisdom, handicraft, and warfare, which earned her the crown as one of the first millennials. Three separate jobs and still living with her parents. In Greek art and architecture, she was often shown either with an owl nearby, perched on her hand, or sometimes just represented by the owl itself. This busy lady also happened to be the patron goddess of Athens. That gig is clearly working out well for her, as it's still the capital of modern-day Greece with a history of over 3,000 years. So why did the ancient Greeks associate their goddess of wisdom with an owl, you ask? <laughs> we don't know. One of the true joys of studying civilizations that have been gone for thousands of years is that you can make up whatever you want about them and boy howdy will folks have a tough time correcting you. <laughs> Usually. Thankfully, in this case at least, we have managed to narrow down the theories to two major possibilities. The first theory is that Athena, classy woman that she is, is a touch older than she'd like us to believe. It's possible that she predates Greek culture entirely, tracing her origins back to an older Minoan palace goddess associated with birds. The second theory has more to do with the city of Athens itself. The region was, and still is, home to a population of owls known as Little Owls, or Athene Noctua, if you prefer yourself some Latin. And it's thought that their ability to see in the dark was associated with wisdom. Combine that with a city in need of a mascot for its wise old patron, and you've got yourself an avian connection. Regardless of how the association came about, Athena is definitely a bird nerd who loves her owls. Horrendously written dialogue aside, Athens was considered a pinnacle of literature, philosophy, and the arts, and given that their patron goddess was the literal goddess of wisdom, the whole Athena equals wise equals owl equals Athens thing just kind of made sense to the ancient Greeks. In fact, owls were so popular amongst the Athenians, they painted them on vases, weights, and various other artifacts. They even featured them on the drachma, which was the primary currency of Greece until their adoption of the euro in 2002. The proliferation of Greek culture played a big role in the association of owls with wisdom throughout much of Europe, and even arguably the world. Which is a problem, because owls are dumb. You see, birds tend to fall across a wide spectrum of intelligence. Up near the top, you've got your macaws and your ravens. They're basically the Mensa candidate birds, and believe me, they act like it. Now, most birds are like most people, somewhere comfortably in the middle. Not too smart, not too dumb. As we continue down the spectrum of intelligence, though, eventually we run into our emus and ostrich, and sadly, right alongside them are the owls. Which is really sad, because I've personally seen an emu run full speed, face first, into a wall. Now, 
Despite how much I love to rag on how dumb owls are, I also have to point out that despite their lack of intelligence, they are one of the most successful birds on the entire planet. Owls are so good at what they do that you can find species of owl on literally every continent of the planet save for Antarctica, a fact that the penguins, who don't live on the North Pole mat, give thanks for daily. While owls might not have put a lot of their points into intelligence and definitely did not spec into wisdom, they have crazy amounts in strength and constitution. They're super strong, super hardy birds. A decent showing in decks given their powers of flight and I guess a point in charisma for looking pretty, and we start to paint ourselves a picture of a bird that's a bit different than traditionally expected. You see, owls aren't really the hyper-intelligent wizard type we like to paint them as. If we really want to class them right, they're actually more of a bloodthirsty barbarian assassin type. So let's talk about all those skills of theirs, starting with their ridiculously massive eyes. If you wanted to have eyes as large as an owl has, you'd need to have two cantaloupe-sized eyes stuck in the front of your face. So the upside here is you obviously have excellent vision, but the downside is there's not a lot of room for anything else. So obviously massive eyes are a huge advantage for a predator trying to find its prey, but to paraphrase everyone's favorite genie, Phenomenal cosmic vision, itty bitty brain space. Because an owl's eyes are so large, there's not a lot of real estate for brain space. Crazier still, the unique shape of owl eyes, combined with the bony ring that protects them, means owls lack muscles to turn their eyes up, down, left, or right in their sockets. That means an owl can only look directly ahead at all times, which is why their necks can turn about 270 degrees. This, in turn, is why cartoons with owls rolling their eyes can drive a man to madness. Now, the upside to these massive eyes is there's space for tons of features that help owl eyes to really shine, in some cases, quite literally. Vertebrate species like owls have cells called rods and cones in their eyes. Cones are designed for seeing color, and rods are designed for seeing light and movement. Owls have a lot more rods than cones, useful for a predator more focused on motion than the color of its food. Because of this hyper-attuned ability to track motion, to your average field mouse, an owl is basically a super sneaky flying T-Rex. Keep absolutely still. This vision is based on movement. The eyes of an owl have even more going for them than their huge size and massive number of rods. Owl retinas have been found to be two and a half times more sensitive to light than humans. And if that wasn't enough, they also have an added feature called the Tapetum Lucidum. This Latin phrase isn't actually a Harry Potter spell, even though it should be, but it is my favorite word to pull out whenever I want to feel smart. It's basically a mirror right behind the already incredibly sensitive retina that amplifies any available light, allowing vision in almost total darkness. We find this structure in quite a few species outside of owls, too. It's why so many pictures of animals have demonic glowing eyes that seem to burrow into your soul. So we've established that owls have excellent vision, but how's their hearing? While there is definitely a lot of variability amongst owl species, all in all, most have incredibly sensitive hearing. Their ears are just hidden under all those feathers. Interestingly enough though, if you were to push an owl's feathers back to reveal its ear, which I do not recommend, they will bite the shit out of you, you'll often find an ear canal so large you can even see the backside curvature of their massive eyes. When you're hunting in the dark, it pays to be able to know exactly where a sound is coming from rather than just relying upon what you can see. While all owls have great hearing, some species take their abilities to the next level. The barn owl in particular is famous for its top-notch hearing. Instead of radar-like ears, these owls have a radar dish-like face. The shape of the face helps to guide sounds into the ear openings, amplifying any sounds they focus in on. Cooler still, they even have specialized muscles allowing them to control and alter the shape of their face at will to further focus in on whatever they're listening to. Interestingly, thanks to the work of Dr. Masakuzu Kunishi, we know that barn owls can hear a pretty comparable range of sounds when compared to your average human. In fact, they actually have slightly less sensitive hearing when it comes to pitch. But what really sets them apart is their ability to hear low decibel or extremely quiet sounds, like those a mouse or a rat might make. In some cases, their ears are even more sensitive than cats. Before we move on, I think it's important to explain those specialized feathers that some species of owl have called ear tufts, because at this point we know that they're not ears, but they look like ears, so we call them ear tufts, even though they're not... It, look, I know that it's a horrible name, okay? Some scientists are just assholes who hate educators and want to make my life as difficult as possible. That's the only explanation I've got. Let's just move on, okay? Let's go, let's go, come on. As dumb as that name is, ear tufts are actually pretty cool. 
They're only found on a few species of owl, and we honestly don't fully understand their purpose, aside from the fact they have absolutely nothing to do with hearing. It's theorized that these feathers play a role in communication, or possibly even camouflage. And speaking of... Another helpful skill for owls is their fantastic camouflage. Most species look so similar to the trees they roost in that they're almost impossible to see. But how good is that camouflage in practice? To answer that, we need to take a quick trip. So to demonstrate just how good owls really are at camouflage, we're out here in the middle of the forest late at night looking for owls. And we can't find any. The point of this is to be a successful hunter, you don't necessarily need to be smarter than your food or amateur wildlife videographer, you just need to not be seen. The really crazy part about the camouflage bit is owls aren't just physically invisible, but they're silent flyers too. Their primary feathers are covered in tiny comb-like serrations called flutings that muffle the sound of wind rushing over them. When you combine this with their crazy powerful talons and nocturnal lifestyle, you basically get an extremely stupid ninja with wings. Fun fact about the talons though, they act like a ratchet system, meaning they close easily, but take conscious effort from the owl to open them. Now that's great for holding onto writhing prey, not so great when you step up onto a trainer's arm with one talon, forget to release the branch with the other talon, become confused, and then violently attempt to take out your rage on said trainer by smacking him with your massive wings and biting him and screaming in his face, and he doesn't know how to help you because all you need to do is just let go, just let go of the branch. You're the one holding onto it. I'm not holding onto the branch, Joanna, just let go. Yeah. Thinking of all the joys of working with owls, it's important to note that despite what Hollywood tells you, owls are not vampires. They do just fine in the sun. The reality is owls can and will hunt during the day. Some species are even diurnal, meaning active during daylight hours. Most owls prefer to hunt at night though, as that's when their adaptations give them a massive advantage. During the day, they have to compete with eagles, hawks, and other daytime birds. And that's just hawk word. Hopefully by now we've established that owls aren't actually the wise creatures that myth suggests. However, while it is true that every educational institution with an owl mascot should be ashamed of themselves, that doesn't mean that owls aren't fantastic for different reasons. They are the OG silent but deadly, the literal terror of the night skies, and some of the best floofy death dealers on the planet. So with all that established, let's see how this myth rates on our positivity meter. With one being an absolute lie and five being a complete truth, I give this ancient myth two out of five talons. Even though I really want to give it a one. While I will absolutely preach the gospel of the not-so-smart owl till the day I die, if we want to be truly fair to the mythos itself, we have to remember that the original association of owls was with the Greek goddess Athena. Remember, Athena wasn't just the goddess of wisdom, she was also the goddess of war. So the Greeks might have been onto something here. You see, owls might not be the best at critical thinking, but they are excellent at something else. Murder. <laughs> Technically, Athena was meant to represent the more disciplined and strategic aspects of war, so owls probably would have been a better match for her brother Ares, the patron of violence, bloodlust, and slaughter. That aside, while I'm definitely not about to claim owls are all about Sun Tzu and battle strategy, they are extremely good at surgical strikes. Few other predators can match that level of stealth. As silly as it is to associate owls with wisdom, we've got to give the original myth props for recognizing the murderous potential of our fiendish feathered friends. The powerful eyes, incredible hearing, exceptional camouflage, and insanely strong talons and wings all make an owl an excellent mascot for warfare, just so long as we leave the strategizing to the ravens. So that's our rating for the wise old owl myth, but what do you think? Be sure to sound off in the comments below and let us know what other owl-related questions you have. They might just make it into our next video. Speaking of, if you enjoyed today's video, please help support the channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll be seeing you next time for another Animal Mysteries.